It's Jonathan Reeves here from Innovative Experts BIM and today we're going to be looking at the new trailer for Twinmotion 2020 and a few of the really awesome features. Now I've been doing a little bit of testing on both PC and Mac. The great thing is this runs on the Mac as well as PC platform so we're going to take a look on some of the new features and look at it on my MacBook Pro. I hope you enjoy the video. So let's take a look at the new Twinmotion 2020 new features trailer. Now there's some really amazing features. So right from the very beginning, we have a look at volumetric light. This is great for atmospheric effects, things like light, smoke and fog, and really introduced a level of realism. Now I really love the new screen spouse illumination they've introduced. It's a lot more realistic, a lot less gamified than the previous versions. Combine that with the uh, new sky atmosphere and the physically based sky. Um, we're getting some very, very realistic images now out of Twinmotion 2020. And then adding to that, we've got the cinematic depth of field. Now that really kind of enables you to simulate real cameras. One of the things on lighting that's a big step forward is the area lights, as well as the combination of emissive materials that actually cast light into the scene. Um, so you're really going to help with things like those night shots and sort of re more realistic sort of nighttime scenes. That's a fantastic new feature. Personally, I absolutely love the new presenter feature. Now this is gonna be great for me, working with my clients to actually show them what their designs are gonna look like. And you can share with this as a standalone file. For those who are more interested in sort of BIM and collaboration, we've got a new kind of uh, X-ray material, which is great for showing things like services and structure. We've also got a notes tool that can actually be used with a BCF export. So you can kind of use that for BIM collaboration with your BIM software. Uh, landscape designers are absolutely going to love the new vegetation growth and vegetation scatter tools. This makes light work of populating very large scenes with an awful lot of detail. And you will notice that the new x plants they've introduced in 2020 are just mind-blowing. The quality of them is just so way ahead of where we were before. Um, it's like a different program. So yeah, the, you know, the interface itself is pretty similar, straightforward and easy to use as it was in 2019. But we've also got a nice new Rhino Direct Link and hopefully a Vectorworks one uh, coming soon. So yeah, there's really no reason not to get into Twinmotion. It works on Mac and PC. And we're going to take a look at some of the new Mac features um, that I'm going to run on my MacBook Pro and see how that looks. Okay, I'm looking forward to sharing the rest of the video with you. Uh, thanks for watching. So we're just going to test out some of the new features running on Mac. As you can see, I'm running Twinmotion 2020.1 on a MacBook Pro. It's a 2016-inch model with a 4GB graphics card. Um, so nothing too special, but actually it's been running okay. And one of the great things with Twinmotion is that you can actually change the preferences. Um, so we have some new sort of settings in here, but if you go to quality, um, we can me mess around with the kind of quality settings here. And if we go to automatic setup, um, it used to be on medium actually, but at the moment we're on high. When we're on high and ultra, we do get better looking um, things like shadows and reflections, so that's worth bearing in mind. So I'm going to kind of start out, I want to show you um, the vegetation paint tool. Now if you would like to have a look at my channel, you will see the vegetation scatter video. I made a whole video on that before. So I'm going to get my paintbrush and I'm just going to kind of show you how this works by getting some rocks. So I'm going to drag a few different rocks sizes down into the dock here and hold shift down and select those. I'm going to get my brush and essentially I'm just going to kind of paint um, a really nice little kind of shape here just in my scene. So that's pretty cool. Um, what you can see is if you then click onto the manager you have the ability to not only turn it on and off but you can actually select the painted vegetation and then that means you can select individual items and change the density. And that's really cool that the fact you can actually post edit and change the density of individual items such as this. So it's really easy to kind of get a really varied randomized sort of uh, vegetation or in this case uh, a rocky patch and modify those as you need. One weird thing I really love as well if you want to you can drag in some bigger ones into the scene and you say they also then just get added. That's pretty cool. And uh, let's just get a really nice big one. Uh, yeah, let's go for something like that with a bit of verticality. So you can see as I kind of add more, we get these lovely, lovely rocks added to the scene. So really, really cool. Now we can also do that um, by deleting them. 
you can see it deletes the ones that we've added <coughs> in the order that we want and we can also go down to vegetation landscape maybe bushes and let's kind of drag a few bushes into the scene so look how cool that is guys that's really really cool let's drag another little fern in there select that one and we'll just reduce the density of that one and kind of just increase the density of that particular type which is a slightly smaller one so all of this is extremely nice a lot more control in the new um sort of painting tools so let's just have a quick look at painting some grass <clears throat> we'll go down to the dock um, I think the kind of grass we're looking for here is probably going to be quite long grass dry grass uh, quite a few weeds and things maybe a few flowers too let's grab those and um, we're just kind of paint those into this little scene here that we're doing you can see that's pretty cool. Um, but what's really nice is, as I say, the fact is we can now turn off the painted scene. I could rename that as well if I wanted. Right click, I could call that grass and flowers. And I can then turn on and off the various elements that I need to. So I think that's a very, very nice new feature on the vegetation paintbrush. Um, I hope you really enjoy that guys and we'll look at the next feature. Okay so let's carry on, carry on with this little scene here. Um, I'm just going to essentially select the vegetation brush and do a little bit more painting in the front here and you'll notice that sometimes when you're a little bit far away the grass um, isn't shown. Now that is actually because of a new preference they've introduced called fading of grass. So basically you can adjust this to be near, far or medium. Um, let's go for far fading and see how that affects things. So when I click OK I can actually see more grass coming in. Now the reason they've done that is because actually um, Twin Motion is pretty taxing on the graphics card and you can see I am struggling a bit on my MacBook Pro now because I've got quite a bit in the scene. Um, however, one of the things that you can do is get a Razer Core X external GPU graphics card and that will really really kind of speed things up. So I'll try and do a video on that shortly. I've done one before so if you check out my channel, let's go back to the medium setting. I think for today's video that's absolutely fine. Good, okay, so what I'm going to do is select the grass and flowers, select the buttercups, reduce the density of those right back. You can see, very very nice. Anyway, <clears throat> the next new feature I wanted to show you was the physical sky and auto light. So I'm kind of going to get into the scene a little bit more and um, getting a bit fed up of looking at that particular detail for the brick. So let's just enhance that with some grass um, and let's kind of have a little look at the basically the scene here. So if we go to the lighting and start to kind of change this, you will notice quite a big difference in terms of the quality. In fact, let me just kind of deselect everything now. Okay, cool. So let's kind of slide, let's go right from zero time. So as I leave it, you'll notice the auto light actually turns up and it slowly adjusts and suddenly the ambient light brightness comes on and the clouds or disappear and the sky kind of turns to stars. It's really, really nice. We get this sort of nice level of brightness that perhaps at night would be quite an effective uh, scene for you. If we kind of carry on, to get a little bit brighter, suddenly you can see some moon shadows coming in. And at some point we kind of get to daylight time. I mean, look at the quality of this physical sky. Absolutely phenomenal. You know, really beautiful, lovely sort of shadows and sort of sunsets. As we go a bit through to sunrise again, you see the kind of sun angle is pretty low um, so the shadows are deep and let's kind of go sort of move through this in a bit more nice detail okay let's carry on with our change of time and getting nice and bright now the shadows are pretty high in the sky so pretty harsh and then once we get again back into the evening you nice know, shadows get long um, the sun begins to set quite nice to sort of spin around and see where it's actually setting um, perhaps over here potentially and you get really lovely 
sort of shadows. Then when we get down to the darkness again, um, you'll see the engine, basically the physical sky calculates and the auto light kind of begins to turn on a little bit more so we can see what's going on. So that's a really nice feature, the auto light um, combined with the new physical sky, much more realistic images. Um, and that's really what I wanted to show you on that side for this particular new feature. Okay, so for the next new feature, what I'm going to do is go to the media dock and I'm just going to create one of the images and I'm going to click on the more button and we're going to have a look at the camera settings. So not only can we change the field of view here, so get a nice wide angle, um, so you know, you can get quite cinematic or we can kind of go a bit wider. Let's go quite in. We can also turn on perspective correction, which really doesn't make a lot of difference on a scene like this, uh, but for your things like your interiors, it will. Vignetting is not new, that's there before. Um, but what is new is these two sliders here, depth of field and lens flares. Uh, lens flares are pretty subtle and you'll only really see those at certain angles. But if you try the depth of field, suddenly now you can see the images looking pretty blurred. So at the moment that's because my depth of field is set to one. If we set that to say five meters, um, you can suddenly see things are a bit more blurred out in the background. You can see we're getting a nice depth of field there. And if we click on this target mode, we can actually click to set the depth of field in the scene. So that's pretty cool, the way you can actually get really cinematic depths of fields quite easily. Super sensitive, let's go down to 0.5. Let's try one meter to, yeah, yeah, that's good. You can see really, really sensitive, but everything is nice and sharp where I'm looking at the beginning and everything in the background is a little bit faded out. As we go back a bit, you see suddenly the rocks there were, were in focus, fade out. Um, so yeah, it's quite sensitive, but the control is there, particularly if you type in. So I really like this new feature and you can play around with the aperture. Actually, there are a couple of other things. We'll look, quickly look at the, um, cut the visual effects. So you've now also got nice controls over the color gradients. Now, we did have those before, but they look a bit improved. And you've also got a bunch of filters. And I think there's quite a few new ones in here. These are a bit like Instagram filters, really. And you can kind of play around with these to get different effects on the scene. And some of them are pretty cool. Some of them are a little bit kind of crazy. But yeah, they're definitely something that you can try and use. I mean, that is actually quite nice. So if you really like the look of that, you can go back to image, click create, create an MRA image, perhaps on the initial one. You can go and just turn off that filter. Where are we? Color gradient. Let's say none. So there we go. We've got the same image with no filter. Slightly different image with a new one. And bearing in mind you can animate in all of these, I think that's actually really, really cool. So yeah, definitely. And the way they respond not only to the time, of course, now I've got to go through more. Um, let's have a look at weather. Just going to slide that down, make it a little bit wet. Let's change the season a little bit. You've seen me do this before, but it's quite good fun. It's always really enjoyable to try out. And now, actually, we do have a new grow slider, and that's really cool. You can see the different plants and things in the scene are actually kind of growing. So that's really cool the way they've done that, the grow slider overall. If you have the settings in here, we'll look at this in more detail in a, in a whole video just devoted to this kind of thing in the future, guys. So please join the channel and I promise I'll do that video for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this little clip. And that kind of wraps it up for this sort of side of the new features for this video. We will be looking at the new features in another one. And I'm going to intend to kind of look at all of these in a lot more detail. But what do you think of the, uh, the new quality of the new sort of trees and plants? Uh, I think they're amazing, things like the rocks. I absolutely love the new physical lighting as well that we've kind of got now. There's a load more controls over here that I'll talk about in other videos, things like shadows and kind of intensity, that sort of stuff. Yeah, so please join the channel, guys. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.